Okay, uh, this is my Bluetooth air hockey server. It's a project that I've uh, put together for my masters in computer games technology. Um, basically, the idea behind it is uh, you've got friends with with a low uh, uh, you've got friends with um, like low budget handsets who want to play multiplayer games together, but their phones aren't really powerful enough to support the games that they want to play. So. The idea is that you play the game on a on an equally low budget tablet that's uh, a lot more powerful than the phones, um, but then the phones are also involved in the game. So you have your your little controller area on the phones, uh, which which represents each half of the table on the tablet. Um, this uh, this game was put together using And Engine. Uh, and uh, the as part of the project, I've written a Bluetooth framework that kind of sits on top of the and, the and engine uh, base game activity, so that hopefully I can contribute this to the and, and engine source. So anyone using uh, the games engine in the future will be able to just build uh, Bluetooth multiplayer games really easily. Um, the framework comes with a, a server and a client component. Uh, each of which has been extended to the to the server and client versions of the game. So um, I'll show you how easy it is to connect with the Bluetooth uh, multiplayer framework. Basically, um, uh, using the normal Bluetooth permissions dialog uh, to make the device discoverable, uh, you can choose whether or not to to enable discoverability. I mean, once once. Uh, you've paired your devices once already, you don't need to do this anymore, so it gives you the option. Uh, so we'll make this device discoverable for now. Um, and then on both of the clients, we can connect to the server. Uh, so, so at the moment it doesn't, it doesn't know of any servers, so, so you just do a scan. And all, all of these dialogues are built into the framework, so whoever Whoever is extending this framework to make their game will have the um, will have all these dialogues already built in. Um, so we select our server, which in this case is Dave's tablet. Sits around, and there's the pairing request. But uh, I automatically dismiss the pairing request through a little bit of uh, reflection trickery. So. So you don't have to worry about some phones pop the pairing request up uh, as a notification rather than as a form on the main screen. So uh, it can be a bit tricky to to dismiss. You have to come out of the game and dismiss the pairing dialog. So this way it just automatically pairs, uh, and then we're done. No, we're both in the game. So uh, if you can see, um... oh yeah, I didn't anticipate that. We're on the, we're on the wrong side. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Right, here we go. Right, okay, well I haven't I haven't quite uh oh, it's upside down. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't quite um sorted the game out fully, so whoever connects first ends up on one side of the board and and whoever can connect second ends up on the other side. So as you can see it's it's very um it's very responsive. Each of us can can move our our paddle around quite happily. And then when someone scores a goal, then a, a little Bluetooth message gets sent from the server to the client, showing the fact that they've got a goal. Um, I've put a few other little little nice uh, effects into this game, like you can. Uh, you can only, you only control your paddle within half of the board, but for an added bonus skill shot, you can throw it down the table um, to kind of try and catch your opponent off guard. <laughs> I don't seem to be doing very well. Uh, hey, there we go. But obviously, as as a penalty, it gets stuck over the other side of the board for a little period of time. So, so you kind of lose out there, uh, and there is obviously the chance of an own goal on the way back. So. It kind of increases the, the fun a little bit, um, and using using the the Bluetooth framework, there's also uh, I was keen to make sure each player gets the right feedback. Um, so vibration messages are sent from the server to the client uh, when you hit when the paddles hit into each other. So um, 
and that that's uh, and also if I could just demonstrate this a second, if if you could move the paddle just just over here or something. Uh, so so each of the paddles, if you keep an eye, if you keep an eye on uh, on this paddle and also on the paddle on the player's screen, you can see that when one one gets hit, the uh, it's actually sending its position uh, back to the client as well, but. Um, the client actually does all of all of the controlling really it's just that when it gets hit by the other player it sends uh, one one initial message back to to uh, change the velocity of it uh, just for that second and then the, the client takes over again so um, it's just just really to show how easy it is to send messages backwards and forwards using the framework um, Oh no! <laughs> And the the idea behind this uh, behind the framework is to make it. I mean, it, it it's uh, it's more of a multiplayer than just two players. Um, the the idea is to build a framework that can support up to up to the maximum number of players that the Android Bluetooth uh, Pico Nets can support, which I think is seven. No up in there. So. Um, uh, but due to the, the limitations of uh, this, this uh, cheaper tablet is running Android 2.2, uh, which by all accounts on, on the forums that I've read, uh, no one, including myself, has managed to get more than two clients connected to one server in Android 2.2, although uh, I've, heard, I've heard tell that it's possible on 2.3, so uh, that's something I might, I might try and upgrade the tablet or try it on another yeah. device. Um, the way this, this game has been developed, it, it all scales based on the size of each device. So, uh, playing the game on a... I mean, these phones are 800 by 400 resolution. Uh, playing the game on a smaller device, 320 by 240, the, the experience uh, is pretty much the same. All the... Um, all the velocities uh, used to move the paddle around on the client are scaled based on the size of the screen. Uh, the, the graphics on the client are also scaled uh, based on the size of the server. So, <laughs> that keeps going through the wall. Um, so, so the game should look the same on all devices really. Um, when when the devices first connect, there's a uh, there's a message that gets sent from from client to server and server to client uh, with each each one's dimensions. And uh, when when this client area is scaled for the phone, uh, like the the offset where where the where the table starts, because um, on some phones that haven't got this this ratio, it'll start further out. So. Uh, with all that in mind, you end up with, um, you can tell that just by putting these these rings are the same size as the paddle, so you can see that, that on on the devices they're the same. So, uh, so there we go. Just move, just move that to about there again, or, or maybe move it a bit further forward. I just wanted to. Yeah, move it a bit closer to the centre line. I just wanted to demonstrate again the. Uh... Oh, yeah, there we go. I just didn't quite get the, uh, the collision there of the 
so that you can see that it's oops ah, that it's uh, moving on the client there. <laughs> Hey. So there we go. So uh, obviously this is a bit of a work in progress. There's still a, there's no scoring system as of yet, and and the game just kind of goes on and on. It was just more more of a, an example of the the Bluetooth technology than anything else, uh, and how that it, it could be easily integrated with with an existing game engine, uh, with the idea of of um, including it in the source so that other people can use it. One of the things that this, uh, well, that this game does actually, it's not a requirement of the framework, is that it's always it's always sending velocities to the server at the moment. So um, I found there was a, uh, that the Bluetooth um, kind of goes to sleep after a little while if you don't keep it busy. So, um, although I had, oh, why does it keep scoring a goal there? I, I did a, I did implement um, a bit of code that that only sent messages now and again if the velocity hadn't changed really. But uh, but um, I think that there's a few other optimizations you could do. It doesn't seem it seems fairly happy with with two devices uh, two devices connected for sure. But it's. Um, I'd really uh, like the chance to test it with more than two. That's that's something I'm gonna have to try and do, and sort out why that doesn't stop. Um, so uh, to disconnect uh, the clients from the server, uh, it's it's really easy. the the uh, The framework deals with it all, uh, sending messages, um, sending a disconnect message, and then uh, there's events that kind of bubble up from the the Bluetooth. Uh, from the, both the Bluetooth client and server when they di get disconnected to uh, to abstract methods that you that you um, implement on uh, on the client and server sides. So uh, all you need to do is, or oh, this is quit, um, and then it quits out of the game and and disconnects from the server. It's it's quite happy that way. Um, and I've also implemented a bit of uh, storage with the Bluetooth uh, client, so that so that once you've paired with a device and you've selected a server, next time you want to come and play your game, you don't have to go through all that effort again. So, um, so when we launch the when we relaunch the client, so uh, so when we want to connect to our server again, um, the the device is already paired, um, so we don't we don't need to make the tablet discoverable again. Uh, so we can just say no to make it discoverable, and then it just sit on this dialogue waiting for players the whole time. Um, so, so we can both uh, connect to the server. Yeah. So if you select Dave's tablet, so it's quite happy. It'll it'll work it out. One of them, one of them's trying to connect, and then it starts off a new server thread, and that's fine. And then it connects to the other one. So. Uh, so hopefully, uh, we may not have, I oh know we've done it again, we've connected in the wrong order, right, okay. So there we are, it happily just reconnected again, it's fine, uh, and then we can carry on with our game. So, um, behind, behind the scenes, uh, the Bluetooth framework just uses an, an array of connected, uh, connected threads, so, um, it's quite happy with players dropping out and coming in all the time. There's no, there's no problem with that. All oh, right, there doesn't seem to be a wall at all on this side. Maybe that's what I've done wrong. <laughs> there's no wall there. Okay, well. That's something to look up for the future. Alright, cheerio.